Right. Thank you. But we also need a reason to put something on an executive session because it's a closed session, which and means there has to be a reason. To I give said it. discussion with about personnel. Do I have to specify? Yes, you have to specify the officer that it's going to be. Decided. No, general personnel. No, you can't make general personnel decisions under the under the open meeting. Well, but I had personnel dash Jerry Shad. Well, you could say personnel matter involves discipline, duties, responsibilities, and you need to identify because we always. I do. had Jerry Shad on the email. That, but what was the purpose? Well, we've never had all that other before. Yes, we did. Okay, whatever you would want. I mean, you know, if you want to discuss an employee in executive session, you need to give the employee who has the right to have discussed in open session a fair right. determination of what is going to be discussed. And that's why I asked why. The fourth thing I wanted on there was discussion on the trees y'all took down on the Hamilton property. And I told you. You said you talked to her a year ago. Right. A year ago, hello. There was a motion here to take care of it. Right, and I said, may I, may I interrupt you? Sure. Okay, and Skipper and I talked about it. I went to him the next day and talked to him about it. And he said what he's going to do is get that machine from the Bertrands, and he didn't want us to plant the trees. He wanted to get and do it himself. And I said, well, fine, we'll reimburse you. That was a conversation. I've been waiting for him ever since. In the email you sent me, you stated that. Right. Then you said, or, I have the insurance company, but you want to said, are there? That's not Skipper. I, I had a Skipper, and he said he'd rather plant the trees himself. And he, I've been waiting That's for not him. the story I'm hearing, but whatever. It still needs to be on the engine. Okay. Due to the fact that it's kind of obvious I can't get these four things on the agenda when I need them on the agenda, I can't see the financials without a bunch of hoopla. Um, the board is pretty much split and has been for a couple of years, two to three. Not our call. The board's split usually two to three. But no, I didn't say whose fault it was. Correct. I'm going to file a little affidavit with the, in the minutes today that is dated and states to Trinity Bay District Board of Directors. As at this day, I will not be held liable or accountable for the actions of the current Trinity Bay Conservation District Board or the general manager, Jerry Shadden, due to actions or inactions completely out of control.
our fiscal budget. The water and sewer fund, the revenue realized was $402,966. The expenditures were $515,152. We're 100% into our fiscal year, have expended 101.17% of our fiscal budget. The cash accounts and certificates of deposits for September 2018 were $6,155,406. And I also wanted to say I want to thank you for helping prep the board reports. You sent me an email. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. I need a motion for this. Um, I have one question. Yes, ma'am. So I appreciate the, the correction, too. But where, I, mean, I don't see where you move the money from. On what? On the correction of the... The, the 66,000. Oh, I didn't move it from anywhere. It was... What happened was last week, electricity went off in the middle of posting this deposit. <laughs> It recorded it into part of the board report. It did not record it into the bank portion. Okay. So it had already been moved out of um, water and sewer into the uh, debt service fund. It just did not show up in the bank. Got it. That is for the bond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I make a motion to approve the financial report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion has been approved. Uh, number six, approved tax report number eight and thirteen. The Chambers County September 8, 2018 collections were fourteen thousand three hundred seven dollars, with current levy collection rate ninety six point seven zero percent. September 2017, $14,188 with a collection rate of 96.55%. In Jefferson County, the September 2018 collections were $351 with a current levy collection rate of 93.90%. September 2017 collections were zero with a collection rate of 96.57%. All right, ma'am. Thank you. I need a motion, please. I make a motion that we approve the tax report. I approve it. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Motion has carried. Item number eight. Review and consider resolution 1810, approving the 2018. Okay, account paper. I'm sorry. Skip one. Review and consider approval of account paper. Thank you. The unpaid accounts payable for the month is three hundred and fifty eight thousand four hundred and two dollars. No. The unpaid accounts payable for the month is three hundred and eighteen thousand one hundred and fifty seven dollars. The total accounts payable for the month is three hundred and fifty eight thousand four hundred and two dollars. Stated it back. All right. I get dyslexic all the time. So. Okay, I have one question. Why I'm glad you're here. Uh, we have a bill from you on um, Town Press. I don't think that ad on the tax rate was the right size or using the right font. Okay. I'm, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. I'll have to check that. Okay, I'd like to hold that bill to leave checks. It specified what size that tax rate that has to be and what size font and all that it has to be. And yours was a lot smaller than the others. And I know there's a state standard on those. So would you check it? Okay, I'm not sure that we received those instructions. Usually whenever that um, is required, it's it's listed in the email. And I'll just have to check well, on that. Well, it's got it, so I'm assuming it was all went out together. I, it may be North Bay. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll just have to check on it and see. Check it. It was election, so it was Barbara sending it out, right? Correct. 
Right. Check with her and then get back with more probably. Yes. Okay. Well, she is out today, but um, I asked her the other day, well, when she sent it, if she sent one to grab all the newspapers, she said she sent them all together. So. On the same email? Yes. There was, um, Gloria, was it on yours? Okay. I, yeah. There was, there was, uh, I think because we were all included on the same email and somebody replied to all or something, um, there was, she was a hold. She sent it out. She said, hold it <coughs> because there may be a correction and then it was resent again. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we may have we may have messed up. I'm not sure. I'll just have to check on okay, this. Okay, we'll get back with on that. Okay. I'll do a motion to approve the accounts payable and hold that on up John Chris till we see what happened there. Sir. All in favor? <clears throat> motion has carried with the uh, stipulation that we hold that. Okay, item number eight. Review and consider resolution 1810 approving the 2018 Jefferson County Certified Tax Program. Who typed it? I think it came from the county. 
very because this came from County. Yes. Now they've got a bunch of spell words. Speaking of spelled out, he said spelled out. I think mean, yeah, they spelled it out all right. Right. Uh, Uh, just to add yeah, to the, the language, it, it's for the, it's to cover the booster station and the Smith Point uh, storage station. Right. They just have just said that the job is complete. They just wanted it to make it. I'll make a motion to accept it. The agreement. I'll second. All right, I have two seconds. All in favor? Um, motion has carried. Should we read the item? It has to I think like I said, there'll be a there'll be specific from now on. Yeah, the vote president is spelled wrong, the secretary is spelled wrong. Personnel spelled wrong. It makes that they it there's some sentences that don't even make sense because of the spelling. I'm just saying that uh, I don't think you're gonna have a generic one anymore. I think everything I that's the impression I get is that every time now that they do a project they want a specific interlocal agreement. So hopefully uh, the uh, detail will be a little better. Okay. Because I believe this one was the 2012 one that they actually just added a sentence. Yes. It's what it looks like from right. the prior form. Right. Any other questions? Okay, number 11. Wait, you didn't vote on that. Did you to this one? Okay. There we go. Okay, we need a motion for that. Yeah, we have George and Mary. I, I, and voted and everything's done. I just, you know, corrected you. But anyway, item number 11 is uh, reviewed and considered accepted Smith Point Warline recommendations by the LJF. Do you have some comments on this? Uh, yes. yes, sir. I've got a presentation to make. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you can talk to us. I'm going to pass out. I think he's got a. Uh, PowerPoint for me, I'm going to pass this out. Which is I believe everybody knows you. Not yes, sir, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Toby Davis with LJA Engineering. Um, we've been working for you guys for quite a while. Uh, it's has, it's not, I don't have enough copies for everybody. I mean, <coughs> and uh, this is basically the same information that's in PowerPoint, except that, as I was looking at this morning, I found a couple of mistakes. So I penciled those changes on here, and I apologize for that. Oh, that's all right. Right away, all, the way, all the way to Smith Point. All right, so, so 562 and then Eagle Ferry Road, 
and all the way down to Smith Point along the route we just talked about. The project includes about a little over 82, almost 83,000 feet of water line, uh, and including in that, included in that is a little over 4,800 feet of borings. Uh, some of them are going to be directional bores. We have quite a few wet areas, and we coordinated with the core, and so we're going to have to bore all these wet areas. We've already got permitting and everything for that, and worked on that this summer. Right. That has to be contracted. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It does have to be contracted, and, I, and I'll discuss that if it's over. The plan is to acquire this project, acquire the services in two different ways. Two different, I'm going to call it probably phase one and phase two. Phase one would probably be likely the material, the material supply contract where we bid out the materials, um, the pipe, the fittings, the valves, you know, the nuts and bolts and everything for the district to install. Phase two, uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean it comes after, it will kind of happen at the same time, but uh, it would be for the boards because you guys don't want to attempt these boards. And actually, we have a couple of very long boards that's going to have to be done, but a lot of small boards too. And uh, so there's about a little almost 5,000, 4,800 feet or so of boards, and that would be, as you said, a separate contract that we'd contract out to a board contract. Well, I believe the board machine that we have won't do it 12 inch. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Yeah, and we, one of these boards is going to be about 2,800 feet long. So, wow. Yeah. <coughs> and we really hate to do that, but unfortunately, we've got to go from dry area to dry area, and that was the only way to keep it out of the individual permit for the board. So. Uh, also, with the gate valves, air valves, and various connections along the way to the existing six inch uh, uh, line. Uh, so, we looked at two different design options. One is a do this as the separate pressure plans or a single pressure plan. Well, what that basically means is you've got a long line that goes down to Smith Point, and uh, we can either design it to where the new line, the combination of the new line and the six inch, delivers water and, and empties into the ground storage tank and fills the tank. So that you basically lose all your pressure. At that point, then the pumps will turn around and would have to install a pressure tank. And the pumps at that point will repressure the water up for just the Smith Point area. And that will help you control pressure right there at Smith Point and give you a constant pressure. Um, the, the, if we do that project, we would have to install a pressure tank. We'd have to install several pipe modifications, some electrical scale changes. It would also, you'd have higher power cost. Yeah, well, I would think the electricity would be quite a bunch. Sir? The electricity cost would be higher. Exactly. You yeah, would have higher power costs, but every drop of water that got to a Smith Point resident would have to go drop it in the tank and get repumped. You also have more chemical costs because all that water would also have to be uh, uh, disinfected with a dispatcher system. Down. Right now, you do put some water in the tank, but you get a lot of water that just comes straight down from, from the Oak Island area and delivers water down there that happens to be re disinfected. The other option is to do this on a single pressure plane, which is what you have now, basically. Water comes down six inch, supplies water to the residents of Smith Point. You fill the tank when you need it, and you've got that supply of water there. If we bring a bigger water line down, we can connect that so we've got some continuity between those water lines, and we can feed that system Smith Point so you wouldn't have to repump, you would have a lower cost. Uh, no pressure tank would be needed. So, we, we looked at these, I, I think that the staffs, talking to the staff, I think their preference is, is, is to do this on a single pressure plane. Um, and I'll talk about some costs here in a minute. But we've also looked at the idea of what it would take to prepare now to use that existing six inch in the future for this force main. Because you have a white hair and you've got some residents out there, 40 or 50 people and they can grow. So when we were designing the system, we looked at some growth out in, in, in white hair and we, we assume that the line that goes, the existing line from White Heron that goes down to Smith Point, we kind of took it out of the, out of the, out of the mix. So what would happen if we took that line out? So we got a, a new line coming down along with the six inch until we get to White Heron, and then we combine it into one new line and come all the way down to Smith Point. But the idea that one day in the future, if you wanted to get sewer service to White Heron, you would take that line out, turn it, turn it into a, a force main, and it would deliver a force main down to the Smith Point levels. So we looked at that. Uh, actually, go ahead and go to the next slide there. So you've got this on your sheet. If we do that, um, 
for a single pressure plane, we would have to, where, where we're supplying all the water from Oak Island, it would require, absolutely require 10 or 12 inch line. We, we can't do that with the natives. We, we, we would have to have a 10 or 12 inch line to be able to continue to supply water down there. If we're going to do it with a separate pressure plane, <coughs> an 8 inch line would work. If we do it with, we do, do something where we're just filling the tank. In that situation, we were going to use that 6 inch of the force man, the 8 inch would work. So we budgeted about one point in the budget, the, and it's all flexible, but we budgeted about $1.125 million for pipe fittings and those types of things to, to, to purchase for the district to install. Uh, not putting valves, but just the pipe and fitting. And we also have some air valves we can install. So on the pipe and fittings, we have about $1.12 million. So here's kind of the rub, is that the TCEQ requires that water lines and sewer lines be at least nine feet apart. So when we install that new line, we don't know exactly right now where we're going to be able to install it. We're, we're working on getting a tech stop permit. So they may tell us, look, you can only go right here. And if that ends up being four feet from the existing line, we're kind of stuck right. for that section, whether it's the whole section or just small, small pieces. So if we're less than four feet away, TCQ is not going to let us in the future turn that six inch into a force bank unless we do something now about it. So what we're looking at doing is, if, if, if we want to turn that into a six inch in the future, we would go to the TCQ, we would get an exception to that nine foot separation rule, but we have to bring them something. We have to do something extra on the line to secure it, keep from, from joints coming apart, any contamination. Hey, but, yeah. Sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Right. And it's all morsel. Right. And I think that morsel, when I talked to the guy, would likely be some type of a joint restraint system. Uh, where you put a physical joint restraint on each joint, bolt it down so you know it's not going to come loose. And we know it's not going to leak because we're going to pressure test it. So I've built into the cost where we go with a single line uh, and use that six inch, and we go into the cost in a minute, I've built into those costs the cost of some joint restraints. And I assume right now it would be every joint for that section from right here and down. In reality, it's probably not going to be that high, but I just don't know today until we get our text up for it. But you want to train the extra collar or something around it? Or what is it? It'd be like two flanges on one on one side of the bell, the other on the other side of the pipe, and it's got all threads and you squeeze it down. Okay. And all that does is it, it keeps it from, from coming apart. Right. And it's kind of like the TCQ is kind of like, well, look, you've got to do something more than just normal if you want this exception. Okay. And that's the cheapest thing I can find to do. All right. So that's kind of the challenge we're taking in doing this. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so joint retrains will cost a little bit. We'll talk about that in just a second. And we want to know for sure, as I said, how many until we get there. Will that get our text off? Okay. Go to the next one, Jerry. Please, sir. Now this is the, uh, the sheet that if you look at your, your sheet, I have some markers on it because I made some mistakes on this. And I apologize for that. I caught it this morning. Uh, but as I was sitting here, I was kind of scrambling all over and make some changes so you have the right information. So this this is for a single pressure plate. These these costs and these pressures are for a single pressure plate. We're just running a line down there, and we're going to we're going to take a six inch. We're going to use a six inch, or we're going to take it off of the sewer line. <clears throat> so it's for a single pressure plate. Uh, we've got about 390 customers of Smith Point. Your pipe and fitting budget is for 1.1 million dollars. So you see on your sheet, for keeping the 12 and 6 inch together, where we don't have to buy restraints, we can get about, keep about 58, upper 50s uh, PSI down to Smith Point. The expected cost of that system is about $918,000 based on my estimates. <coughs> if you subtract that from the $1.125 million, it leaves a surplus of about $200,000, $206,000. If on the other hand, we go with a single 12 from right here and down. We've got to put strengths on this 12 because a 6 might be a, uh, a four spring in the future. So we have additional costs. So instead of 918000 it's going to be about $1.124 million, which is within about 1200 bucks of our budget. If we drop it down to a 10 inch, same thing on the price. You see the prices and the surpluses, and you see the pressures go down to about 38 uh, PSI and about 47 PSI. That's the problem that they have now, is low pressure. Exactly, exactly, right. The thing I didn't show you on here that I should have also is that if we did a separate pressure plans, uh, we could do that with an eight. And uh, if you want to write this down, I'll give you these costs. I should have had it on there. The eight inch line on a separate pressure plane um, uh, by itself.
itself, where, where you're, you're, you're converting to a uh, six inch to a four spin, uh, it'd be about five hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars in cost, and your budget, your surplus would be five hundred forty-eight thousand one hundred ninety-four dollars. On the combination where you keep a single pressure plane with eight and six, then uh, it would be I'm sorry, separate pressure plane, separate pressure plane on eight and six. That cost would be four hundred sixty-eight thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars. Which will leave you a surplus of six hundred fifty-six thousand three hundred twenty-nine dollars. Now, Jerry, go to the next slide if you would. Real quick. So, you have this copy in your hands too. This is basically the project budget. So, this is a, a amount of money that's available in the grant. And um, so, all these numbers I just gave you are encapsulated within that budget. So, we haven't gone over anything. It just means that if you pick the most expensive one and, and go with that, it may not give you any, you, you, you donate your labor. You know, you're not going to be able to pay yourself, more than likely. Right. Because all that's kind of predicated on how many restraints we have to put in all that. We don't know that yet. But I, I think I'm conservative at this point. It'll be less than this. So, um, so all that is a lot of information. If you got any questions, uh, I'll try to clear, clarify what I said or, or answer well, that. I, I actually do have a question for Mike Wheels. What uh, PSI is better? Is what, what is better for Down Smith? You know, this uh, drops to 38 with a 10 inch or a 6 inch, 38 PSI, and then you got 58 PSI with a 12 inch. Which is better uh, for us in the long run? The 58. Well, we don't have to. Spend any more money to go with the stuff, you know? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I would uh, recommend going with the 12-inch line to get the 58 PSI out there, because right now we're already at about 38 to 35. And right. the top rate right. pressure that the TCQ requires is 35, so we're basically hovering right there all the time now, so get it up to that 58 PSI, yes, sir. So get below the 35, then that's the above or no? No, it, 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 that's just the standard operating pressure that they have recommend that we have. That's what we've got to have. At least 35. It's below 20 you've got to do more. And if I that's not much pressure. That's not much pressure. And if I understand right, what we if we went the other way on the on the other system, we would spend four or five hundred dollars more per month every month on electricity. That's right. We did some numbers. We've from got now on. Right. That's right. From now on. We did some numbers that uh, somebody has a well site that's equivalent to that that we contacted. So it's about five right. six hundred dollars a month. Okay, so that would be adding expense to the water which delivers. That, that's correct. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other problem you have with the 38 PSI looking at it, if you have a fire out there, they open a hydrant, right. open a flush valve, anything, it's a not break, anything like that, it well, drops. It's, it's not really improving exactly. their system. One other thing to consider too is once you put this line in, whatever size you put in, whether it's your 10 or 12, it's in the ground, you can't make any bigger. You put the 12 inch line in, and you decide later on that a separate pressure line is better. And with the CPG grant project, if you can get sponsored by the county that you have, you could probably take that and go down there and that, do the changes we needed to make at, at Smith Point in the future and convert that to a separate pressure point. We'll put the piping in now, the valving in now, where, where in the future, if you wanted to convert that to where everything at Smith Point comes out of the tank, you know, on the piping side, the connections will be there. Right. All you have to do with a CPG grant for the future is drop the pressure tank in, do some, some piping changes for that, some electrical, and that would more than likely fit within the amount of money that you want to get out of those grants. Right, then it would still keep the water at a low cost. And you still have, yeah, right. you, you, well, you, you would have the increased cost at that point because you'd be pumped, right. but you'd have the option. But at least now you have the big infrastructure on the ground, the water line. You can't go, you can't make it a 10 now or an 8 now and then change it later to a 12. No. But you can later on add, add facilities to make it a separate pressure plane and do the repumping if you if you ever decided that was in your, in your interest, in your best interest. It sounds like the right thing to do in case there's development down there and everything where we could be able to supply that for. And uh, okay. I know it's expensive uh, right now, but in the future it's going to be more expensive. So it sounds like that's the best way to go with the bigger line. Because we have the option of getting the six inch to use as a sewer line to recoup some money. You don't like it? No, no. Okay. As many leaks as we've had in these water lines, I sure as hell don't want a sewer line next to my water line. Right. right. And that's
that is I don't know if the sick leave's in there for a temporary uh, case of emergency line. Right. So we had a problem with the 12. We still got sick, at least we've got a 6 inch going down there. Now I don't like I don't like using this convertible 6 inch to the sewer line at all. Did we, <clears throat> did we look at the kind of the cost of or any change it would be in it as far as using the 6 inch line for a case? You could definitely do that. Uh, I think the thing you got to be concerned about there is that you're going to be a little limited on the size and we'd have to look at how many connections could we serve when we're pumping it to 25,000 feet or whatever that length is because it's still a good bit of distance down and how much head loss would be we'd see because because by the time you do a six inch and you got the idea of a six inch then you try to slip another line inside it. Oh, you're sure The floor should be yeah, able to it. The floor should be able to go into it. Uh, uh, a HDP. Well, I mean, you, you probably know better than I do, so if you make a four would go, that four would be a good size line, that'd be good. That'd give you a, yeah. a, a six inch casing, that way if it did leak, it's going to be good at all. Yeah, that was, that was smart thing. And if you did that, you, you probably would not have to spend the money on the restraints. Right. That's, that's what I was thinking money. too when he was saying. So well, we, we could actually run that up the flagpole of TCQ and ask them, you know, hey, how would you, if we come back to you later on, I want to turn this, this section of water line into a sewer casing with another polyethylene on the other side or something, you know, what would you do well, that if they're less than nine feet away? Greg's point that he brought out that would help satisfy that. Well, my, here's my thought. The decision we're making today, my kids, my grandkids got to live with later. The same problem we had down here at Four Corners when it was a huge jump pipe and it ruptured and all night long nobody had water. On hand I don't want that to be the one that they said, well, he was on the board at the time they put that junk in there. Yeah, that cheap pipe they used over in Hancock. Right. Oh, we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. And, and also, if you ended up with a smaller pipe inside there as a casing, and you couldn't, there's too much pressure going all the way down, you could actually drop, drop, actually drop an intermediate pump station in it. Right. And, 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 and then repulse. So you could actually you know, utilize a small pipe if you wanted to do that. There's a potential for a lot of growth in white herring. You know, and also potential downstream pointing you know, for it to develop. I, just, I would hate to lay an eight down there and something big pop up and we're still in the same fix then and we are right now. And we have this chance at the help that we're getting from the GLO. So we're not going to get it. Either. Like Mike was saying, you know, if a fire, you know, pops up out there, then we're going to buy it. Right. So even if we use most we of it. We've experienced that before in the past. Now, if you remember, <coughs> uh, whenever you get picked paid by them, uh, you remember? I know you had a little fire down there and called uh, the Stella Rock Patrol out. And we put in a, a box of meter because they were going to pay and they never did. Mike had one other thought about uh, hurricane. Yeah, if you, uh, you know, if we, if we do utilize the existing booster station that we have there, we do have a hurricane and all that gets submerged. If we've got that 12 inch line out there, and I realize people are going to be out of that area, but nonetheless, it hasn't damaged anything that we've got. All of our stuff is still usable, so we don't have to worry about that as well. Replace the pump and the but you, you, exactly. if you figure me an isolation valve anywhere in the country, yes, sir. We have it's valves from the west, west plant. Yes. We have we have valves every probably three or four thousand feet, and we can do more if you want. No, no, four thousand feet fine. Yeah. I'm just saying, I wouldn't want to hold that whole line and be no, down. No, I think we have, we, the problem's on one end. We can look up there. I think there's fourteen gate valves up there, and we can add a few more if we need to. I think we've got the budget to do it. Yeah. Second, second line. Yeah, I'm sorry I said it's small, but there's 14 gate valves. We stopped that problem. And, and honestly, we'll probably have more because by the time we bore, uh, you know, a wet area, a wet area, we probably won't have a valve on both sides. So we work, you know, just in case you have a leak, you know, the blow out, you want to isolate. That makes sense. So we're going to have a little more time. There's no fire hydrant on this one. We don't have fire hydrants on it. We could put some on there. Um, we, we, don't, we, didn't, we didn't have any in there. Those could be installed with yes. us if we need to. Yes. Oh, no. You know, you're supposed to have five or however many feet here. Uh, if, it, if there's residential there, then I think it's what it, every in thousand. The state highway, I think there's different rules every so many thousand feet, I think, on state road. Yeah, this, this is kind of yeah, more transitional, right? In a rural area where there's no people, we don't look at it usually. There would be one in front of White Herring and the one that you're going to probably need to be strategic.
strategic bus and flushing connection, and you can make those hires if you wanted to. We need to probably think about that. The TCQ rule is you have to test every thousand feet. They used to even put the whole line together and do a bacteria test at the end. Now their new requirement is you have to test every thousand feet. So you have to make some kind of tap there anyway and, and pull sample. So you have 82 500, right? No. Uh, yeah, I don't think we want 82 no. 500. <laughs> 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 All I'm going to do Mike, is make a tap on the line to test it. As far as the push out as we go, I mean, I'd like to get with Jerry and we're place some fire. I'd like to get away from the flushing hydrants. Yeah. I just don't like the flushing hydrants. Right, right. And then we, you want to make those fire hydrants. That'd be an easy way to do it. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Is there any other questions or any other thing, Toby, that you could tell us about? Uh, I'm empty, so whatever. I think it's very beneficial for the community. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. I'm not going to pay for it. Huh? I'm not going to pay for it. GLO's paying for it, too. I'm not going to pay for it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh,
and I'm uh, hopeful. Well, according to this, it's not going to cost us anything. Yes, it if is. we break even, it's not going to cost us anything. Yeah, it is costing. It's costing his labor. It's costing our fuel. It's yeah. costing our, our, our trucks we bought. I mean, our, our equipment we bought. And everything else. And that's all I'm asking for. It's very sure. simple. Sure. Is that too hard? Some cost to county would be nice. I mean, some cost. I mean, uh, I, 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 I agree with 100% of y'all. Yeah. This is something we can add. It's going to add to our our infrastructure. I agree, sure. but then don't don't we deserve the board deserves the cost? It's going to take us to add to that infrastructure, or do you even want to know? Or do you care? Jerry, guys, don't start that bullshit. But no, anyway, I'm not, I'm not, Jerry has already told us the cost. No, he hasn't. He has given you the answer. You don't like his answer. No, I have to not figure. Right. Well, we all agree that the, we do need the line, right? Well, I mean, we can do that, but I'm asking for a time. We, we do, and the 12 I mean, inch line wrong. does make the most sense. Great, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. He's given us a what, what is the cost? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, if I'm out of line, but I'm listening to y'all, and I don't know what the cost. Right here. Where? I, I don't have that information. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get it. And not to be the dead horse. No, sir. Okay. Well, I mean, Kevin, two point, two point four million dollars is all spent. I said, what is our cost? Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be two point four million dollars. Because if we don't, I can that. We can, uh, you can call it and take it over. So you're interrupting him. He's talking. He's trying to explain here. I mean, because if the pressure drops below thirty five psi, they're going to mandate to do it. Now we've got a grant to do it, or you're going to have to pay all that money out of your own pocket eventually. Yes, I understand that. Yes. I totally understand that. But I'm asking what is our cost. I, I can't figure what it costs, Jeffrey, whenever I don't know what size line we're putting down there. I don't know exactly how where he's going to put the line at. We have to decide I, on the line size. He, he's going to have to decide on the line size that he's going to use. And then he's going to put a set of plans together and it'll tell us where we're going to put it, how we're going to put it. A, a six inch board costs different than a 12 inch board and so on and so forth. There's just, you're right in the beginning stages of this and I can't, you know, everything I do would be speculation. Everything he's doing is speculation right now. Until we know exactly what size we'll get to that point. Exactly. That's why we're here for that. So what are we voting for? We're not voting. What are we voting for right we're now? We're not voting. I guess to decide what size if we're going to go with the 12 inch or the yes. inch or, or It's go. not on the agenda to vote. Well, it says review and consider. Accepting the Smith Water Line. For what is that? We're going to accept the recommendation made by the vote. I apologize. Yeah. There's a motion on the floor that Tommy Gilbert has made. Would you make it again? Yeah. Hey, I, I make the motion that we uh, accept OB's recommendation on the 12 inch line. Like I say that. And y'all think the same thing because you just said so. Well, I don't think So mm -hmm. now they can find out what the expenses are. Okay, okay. now. Right, we still have time. Yeah, what's the issue with your Next week, maybe, I don't know. So we know how long we can vote on it. Before you find out about it. Okay, so we have to figure out how to vote on it. Reward your motion to have him come back with figures on the 12 inch line. Not to finalize it today. We just make a recommendation. Did he bring you prices back on the 12 inch line? We have that social media. Toby, can you come back to the next meeting and bring us to the cost of the 12 inch line or the problem? I can give you another estimate. I can't give you the cost. But what has to happen now? Let's just say you told me today to go to work. Finish the plans. We're gonna um, get the, 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 we got two sets of plans. One for material, or, or two sets of bid documents. One to, to acquire materials for the district to put in, and the other for a boring contract. I want the boring contractors price until we get those sent out. And we can't do any of that until we get a textile permit. That's really what's kind of holding everything up. We're hoping to have that in about a month. So the, the two yeah. Let him explain, please. 
So once, once we get all, once we get those, we'll be able to finalize our plans. Uh, we'll be able to get approved by the GLO, and um, then we to know hard prices at that point. We had to bid out the materials and, and the borings, and we we'll get those numbers back. Then we know for sure. But at that point, we've already got a price on material, whether it's 12 inch or 10 inch or 8 inch. So if you, if, and I'm not trying to get your business, but at that point, if you said back up, well, I don't like those prices. Let's go back around here and start all over. It's a challenge. Now, what I think is going to happen is that if we don't use those restraints like we talked about, when I leave here, I'm going to call and talk to the TCQ guy. That budget's going to go down. So there's going to be some 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 money and the difference in there is going to be available to you guys for fuel, labor, however you want to allocate it. Um, we uh, if some of the other materials come in lower, that's going to drop free up some, some surplus in the budget. And all that extra goes to the designer's family grant, goes to the district to pay for labor, fuel, whatever your expenses are, and there's just some accounting that you have to do. Thank you, Toby. Yes, Tommy, you had a motion? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to hear a second? Yeah, I'll hear a second. You want to repeat the motion? I'll be confused now. That was fine. Alex, can you? Maybe? Tommy? Okay. I made the motion that we accept Toby's uh, recommendation on the 12 inch line. So that he can proceed. Point, so we can proceed and get it. Uh, but you're, you're taking the yeah. cost. You don't know how many borings, you don't know the cost. You don't know what's going to give us all the cost. But you're accepting it now. We're accepting his recommendation. <laughs> and now he's going to start paying. You're accepting his recommendation to go further up. Uh, Investigate. Well, we yeah. Proceed. Sure. Yeah. Tell me now, what, what if it runs over this final figure is 2.4 million? Are we liable for that? Nothing. We don't have to do this at all, Jeffrey. No, yeah. I mean, I'm asking one question. We're not about to do this. I'm not going to be quiet. Are, are we liable? Let's say you come back and it exceeds 2.4 million you've got up there now. Are we liable? Is Trinity Bay liable for the whole thing? Yes. If you award, this is nothing but speculation. Here's what would happen. Let's just say that you go down the road. We uh, we we bid everything out. So now we bid material out. We got we got we got more yeah. prices, and we and we think for some reason the whole thing went two hundred thousand dollars more than we anticipated. Okay, then somebody's got to pay that. The county's not going to pay it. There's more grant money. So yeah, trade maybe that's come up with that. If you decide at that point, whoa, 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 whoa we want to stop. We don't want to do anything. You could, however. At that point, then there's the problem's going to be is that somebody's going to have to pay back the engineering and the other administration costs that have been expended to this point. Here we've already got thirty-five thousand into it from environmental studies. Right. Yeah, and there's been there's been engineering expended too. At that point, it will be we will be further down into design. So there's going to be a at least some money. And somebody has to pay some money back to the deal. Well, I mean, that's all I was curious about. If it so if it goes over what this. Two hundred forty thousand dollars. You got to be. We, we've got to take that, right? Somebody has to. Okay. And right. if it goes under at the same point, we get money back. Right. You got to make two points at the same point. All right. We have a motion okay. and a second. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. Uh, uh, motion has carried. All right. Uh, now, now we know exactly what we want. Yes, sir. That's good. I mean, if we go over it now, what if it comes back and it comes out? Okay. It has always been that way. Yes, or we're going to get money then. Okay, we don't have to get it right now because we haven't seen it. What did you say, Greg? We're going to get the money. Okay. Uh, we need it. Where are we going to get the money? We're going to have a bank sale. All right, we have a case. Report on GLS projects. Tommy? We've got about 500 feet left to dig. Hopefully, I can get it done with the well done at the end of next week. We've got the most of the pipes based on the rail for this part of the bit. I have four more runs I have to put in. Uh, I put a phone call in today to find out where the boxes are. I have not heard back yet. There's five of them that I'll put in that are 24 feet long feet. Uh, and then we'll move to the bottom line. We're doing good, it's just the rain. Oh, y'all are doing excellent. I mean, that's crazy. <coughs> because I remember when we first talked about this, it was a discussion whether we could even finish it by December. 
And now it's no problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other report? No. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Y'all have done a good job. Thank you. Okay. And the drainage issues? Uh, three kind of six feet. We got work on spill top, north of highway 65 and west side of the uh, We moved a new feet on the windows we plant. The feet on 30 we cut from uh, Crooked Bio to 1663 on Phelps property and we crossed over to the south side of uh, 1663 on the Donna Burson temporary, temporary easement. And uh, we finished with what we can do with that machine on that. We brought it in for repairs, just uh, welding on the cutter. And now we moved it back to Pretty Bay. We went up on this, uh, to the south side of Hancock Loop Road and come back in from that direction, uh, going back to where we uh, went out uh, the other way. The CAT 329 is uh, working on the GLO project at Fear Road. Uh, the Long Ridge, we're going to jump it in around. Uh, we put some floating grass out of the red floor at the uh, west plant. Uh, we repaired the washout on Turtle Bio on the west side of Roger Russell Road. We just put riprap on it uh, for now. Uh, that's where we are talking about putting the bridge with the, on the road with the county. Um, we installed two separate culverts, 36 by 30 foot long, 36 inch uh, <coughs> driveway. That's on the ditch, uh, and that's South Hampshire Road. Uh, we cleaned uh, from Fig Ridge Road South to Fig Ridge Road North. And now we've moved that machine to ditch 9E, and that's west of Refuge Road and south of 1985. Um, the Dozer 6 is on the project, the uh, GLO project at Fear Road, so is the Dozer, the, the D3 Dozer. Uh, the uh, little 308, we've been jumping in around to repair the crossing on ditch 2A, that's north of 2936 and west of uh, 46, that's 562. Uh, we repaired a crossing on the uh, Ditch 1G, Kelly Creek, that's up on uh, Sherman Road, North Platte here. Uh, we removed some debris out of Ditch 9C1, and that's North Platte here, west of Brush Island Road. And uh, we replaced a pipe crossing on Ditch 8, um, excuse me, 6A4, and that's south of Hebert Road, and east of 124. Um, Treasurers are doing their uh, normal stuff. They're assisting with the haul truck tying down. They're working on the pipe shops and the fence shops. Uh, the, uh, the spray crews are, are, we've got them doing other things. They haven't been spraying much, but it's uh, the weather and uh, it's, about to, it's about getting the weather supposed to shut down anyway. But they've been doing, uh, helping with the uh, fences and, and uh, uh, we're still mowing and uh, we're. Uh, Actually, right now we're putting in uh, drain pipes and stuff so that we can get back and spray when we get off the next year. That pipe crossing on uh, south of Hebert Road, that was on the Matthews place? No, it's uh, Tony Armitage, and it's one that we had put in here a while back, and uh, it was actually uh, Spencer's right by where his and uh, Randall Spencer's property. Right yeah. Here. And we put, we put one in that was. Uh, uh, it was supposed to be on the spencer, but we put it in and it was shorter than it was. So, uh, oh, okay. So we linked it. We just, we just added on to it so that it's fenced and put its fence back around the end of it. So it's on Tony Longwater's property. But, uh, we don't know exactly where his property line was. We ended up in the wrong place. It was no big deal. Okay. It was the pipe, but it was, it was shorter than it was originally. Awesome. So, so it's Right. Because I heard something about it and I wasn't sure. Yeah, I was going to ask him. Yeah, we talked to uh, Tony. They talked to him up there yesterday. He's, he's safe. Uh, All right, so everybody's happy. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Danny. We also might do uh, the PCA is going to be doing the PCA on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have it on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, we had 96 responsive grinder calls. We installed five new grinders, one new uh, sewer tap, six stoppages, two grinder pumps replaced, and seven main repairs. Uh, construction crew installed 500 feet of force main on West Bay Shore for two new grinders. And we installed a new five on the 1,320 feet of 60 floor line. Made a uh, six inch tap on the closed line, tied in for 1724 for repair energy. Uh, the grinder maintenance is not unusual. Is that that mean? No, it's not. Okay. I mean, it's, it's not. What do y'all find, David? You know, it just depends, Mike. I mean, uh, we some of these are repeat calls, like water burger. We had several problems with water burger, and water burger's been there a pretty good while, and we, me and Mike have talked about it, and we'll come to the we'll fix it to go over there and, and excuse me, set another grinder tank bigger. We're having paper issues there and, and this thing's far equipped from the building and the, the tank's so small the paper's uh, piled up in there and it's blocking everything off. Well, so, I like to hear that because if you have a recurring issue, it's the same problem over again. Right. At the same place, you need to do something else with that. So right. We have certain areas that the pumps air lock and we've <coughs> got the crews together and got them all on the same page with that and come up with a solution. Repair this airlock problem, and we have a guy that's doing a procedure now to stop it. So, you know, we're looking for a way to try to back it down. But these, these little grinders are going have problems. Yes. You know, we've changed a different style of pump in the last year to uh, some of the areas that are more prone to baby wipes. They stop them up every time. So, we've bought a few, just a handful of uh, a different brand of pump, different style of pump, put those grinders and have eliminated some of those all together. So it's just we're getting together and coming up with solutions to try to fix these problems based on what area. Well, they're more aggressive pumps or something? They, they are. They're more aggressive and uh, and it's a little bit more detailed to hook them up, but they're not even more expensive. Actually, they're a little bit cheaper. Really? And, and they work good? Yes, sir. Well, that sounds like maybe an answer that can help. <clears throat> Every time we go to these meetings, it costs us money. So, right, pretty much just like that. Thank you. Anything else, Dave? That's it. Mike? Yes, sir. Uh, Apache Ecological Services has finished with the landing one of the sales at the uh, Wing Wastewater Treatment Plant and one at the Hanover Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, we are going to be uh, doing some more planting in the near future. We've got to wait for these uh, plants that they just planted to take root before we start on any of the other sales. Uh, number two, one of the two broken clarifiers has been repaired at the Oak Island Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, we have parts on order to repair the second one, so we have both down for a short period of time. We've got one up and going waiting on parts for the, for the one remaining that is down. Uh, three, we've been uh, performing customer service inspections as required by the TCEQ. I'll be sending them an update on our progress this week. This was due to the uh, on-site survey that they conducted back in July. So I'll be updating those guys this week about where we're at with everything on that end. And the uh, wastewater lift station projects moving forward. We have completely a new service at the Aqua lift station and we're waiting on energy to change the service wires over. They're kind of uh, log, backlog due to the storm up in Florida. They sent a lot of their people right. over, over there to do those, uh, make repairs there. So, And then also at the Altice lift station, we've done some updating there and they're giving away we're moving along with that. Why did they have to do heavier line? No, sir. What we've done, uh, some of the some of the entire electrical system over there, all the way from the weather edge, we've had to change to the deterioration of the of the uh, boxes or you know. But as far as upgrading, it's going bigger wire sizes, it still remains the same. Okay, but it's just age. It's age. Yeah. Okay. Didn't do that. Is that grass going to take pretty good even with this bad weather? We think so. We've been talking to the engineers about it, uh, Loretta, and keeping her up to date, taking photos, sending them to her and that. Yeah, so I think her, she, she thinks everything's going to take off. And do the work with it. Yes. Thank, thank, is there any other questions for Mike? Thank you. At this time, uh, I don't know if we have any reason to do an executive session. I need a uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that motion.
All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Mike, you'll want to do it. Yes, sir.